Hey friends and welcome back. Do you feel overwhelmed with your workload at home and in your workplace? Do you find it difficult to prioritise and do what matters most? Well I've been there, I know how that feels. And today we're going to look at some ways that we can help manage our workload. We're going to look at how to prioritise our workload for maximum success, productivity and fruitfulness. We're going to look at three steps or three aspects that can help us in this to manage both at home and at work or in fact in any aspect of your life where you need to prioritise a workload. These three steps will help you and will help you skyrocket your productivity. So the first step we need to take is we need to be really clear on our goals. Now our goals set our trajectory, our kind of end point and define what fruitfulness and productivity and what success look like. So we need to be really clear on our goals. And the reason being in terms of our workload is that as we match our goals and our workload together, we can see what aspects of our workload are important and will contribute to our goals and what aspects are not that important and don't really contribute and this allows us to it provides context and allows us to prioritize now so often while this might seem a bit of an easy step it isn't because we want to get on with things we want to tick things off on the uh, to-do list and just get on with everything and actually what we need to do is step back and be really clear on our goals first to get those in place and then to match the workload um, to that. And that's what Stephen Covey was, was getting out from his, his quote that I used at the beginning of the video. What we, want thing, what we want to happen is for our goals to dictate our workload, not our workload to dictate what our goals are or the workload to help us in fact be so overwhelming that we miss our goals and end up wasting our time. So it's important to set goals in home life, work life, every aspect or facet of your life. Not in a, it doesn't have to be in a really um, detailed way, but just in a sufficient to be able to say, well, actually, this is where I'm heading. And there's a, a great quote by Bill Copeland, which I'll just read out to you. Um, Bill says, the trouble with not having a goal is that you can spend your life running up and down the field and never score. So being a football fan, I, I love that kind of thing, but it's so prevalent. If you haven't got that goal, it it just doesn't give you the, I suppose, the objective. You know, if imagine if football didn't have a goal, then the game would be meaningless because you wouldn't have, you wouldn't know what you, what you're doing. And so it's important in uh, in our lives to have these goals to. Um, shape where we're heading and to help prioritize our workload. So I hope that's helpful. So step one is to be really clear on your goals. And as we progress through these next three steps, I'm just going to use the example of um, setting up a YouTube channel and getting it monetized just as an example that we can follow through on each step. So just remember that in terms of uh, the goal as we're going through this video. So the second step is really to understand where we're at, to quantify the workload. Um, and this is so important really to be able to understand what our workload is, what we need to prioritize, make sure that nothing's forgotten. And that these can be things that um, you feel you need to do, that you've been asked to do, that you feel pressured about. What you need to do is collate all that together in one place so we're able to see um, everything. Now the simplest way to do this is to write everything down. Now it can feel a little bit daunting doing that but it's important really to press through and put everything down onto a bit of paper or onto your t task list if you prefer to do something electronically or in a Word document and um, this has two benefits. As I've said it's kind of it allows us to see the global position of where we're actually at. If you imagine on a journey, if you're going somewhere, you have to understand where you're beginning that journey, where you're actually at. So that's the first benefit of it. The second benefit is that it really helps in terms of your thinking. Our brains aren't made, our minds aren't made to hold lots and lots and lots of things. They're made to think, to be creative, to solve issues and problems. And when we clog them up, we're trying to remember everything we need to do in our workload, we get paralyzed and not use our brains to the fullest extent. So by doing this, 
by putting everything down we achieve those two benefits and is summed up by Albert Einstein who said this. He says, paper is used to write things down. We need to remember our brains are used to think. So I love that quote from Albert Einstein, really short but, but to the point, we need to put everything down and use our brains for what they're meant to be used by. So let's do that now. Um, as I mentioned, we're gonna just go through the example of a YouTube channel and what's involved with that. So on the screen now, I'm just basically listing out different tasks and everything that will be involved in doing that. Perhaps you can pause the video and do something similar for yourself to put down everything that you're, you've got to do that comprises of your, your workload. So I hope that makes sense. So step two is really to be able to quantify what your workload is and be aware of it on a, if you like, a global scale. So the final step is to take your workload, the list that you produced, and compare it and match it to your goals in order to determine what you should be doing and what you shouldn't and what is a priority and what is not. Now the method that I've found the best to help us with this is um, using a simple grid or some people refer to it as a matrix or a quadrant. And what you do, you simply organize your list according to the um, criteria that is outlined in the grid. Uh, making sure that everything is taken from your list and is at least in one of the quadrants. Now, um, the most famous one of these is the Eisenhower matrix, which basically uses two axes, which is one, um, important and non-important, and the other is what's urgent and what's not urgent. So you use those criteria to overlay, um, if you like, your list, overlay it onto your list, and put things into the relevant quadrant. So urgent in the important quadrant, you might say, well, urgent is something that needs to be done in the next 10 days. Important is what contributes the most in my list towards my goals. And so when you begin using those criteria on your list, it becomes obvious where things fall and where things um, need to go. And once you've done that, you then overlay if you like some actions to that, that will help you determine what to do next. So over urgent and important, you put do. And then over the other three, you put delegate, you put um, delay, and you put delete. So when you overlay that criteria, that um, action list, you can then really see, well, what needs to be done now? You need to be doing the do things. Those are the things that are most urgent and contribute to um, your goals. Then there's the things that aren't important and aren't urgent, and you should really delete them and get them off your plate. So hopefully, um, using this simple grid method will help you um, prioritize. That's what we've been trying to do here. We help you prioritize your workload to be able to do what matters most. And hopefully as I've been talking, you've seen the example of what I've been doing in terms of um, my YouTube uh, task that we kind of used the example all the way through. So hopefully this helps you visualize um, what you should be doing. Um, yeah, give it a go and see where you get to. If you need more help on this specific aspect of things, then I've produced a separate video, link coming up um, on the screen now that will be able to go deeper into this, the subject of using grids to organize ourselves. And I hope it blesses you and allows you to become more fruitful and productive as a result. So there we have it. How do you prioritize your workload for maximum success, fruitfulness and productivity? Where you follow these three steps. One, to be clear on your goals. Two, to know exactly where you're at and what your workload looks like and three to use a grid method like the Eisenhower matrix to be able to organize your tasks and your workload to be able to determine what is the priority to do next. Now I kind of guarantee if you follow these steps through and put your workload through this process you'll be able to gain much clarity that will lead to maximum fruitfulness and productivity. So on to my one last thing. 
I just want to briefly talk about tools and processes. Now, when we've got um, a heavy workload or we feel overwhelmed, the tendency can be to think, right, I'll just download a new to-do app or a new tool that will help me because once I put everything into that, it will sort my life out for me. Um, I used to think that way and you know, if I'm honest I still have a tendency to do that because I like to improve and make things as efficient as possible. But the reality is, is that while these apps and everything can help you, what you can end up doing is spending more time managing the app and putting stuff into it rather than getting stuff out of it that you need to be able to be as productive and as fruitful as you, you can be. So. I think you've both got to look at two things. You've got to look at having a really simple tool and a really simple process alongside it to be able to gel together to, be, to lead to maximum um, efficiency and productivity. That's why sort of the grid method I've mentioned is really simple but can really achieve some, some great results. So when you're feeling overwhelmed, don't just go for the latest tool that's out there or think a new to-do program will help you. It's a little bit more than that. It needs um, a good process and a good tool together. Now, one of the tools that I have found that I found really helpful is something called To Do, which is um, a to do list uh, program. Um, links and a picture of it is going to come up on the screen. But what I like about this is it's just its simplicity. It just breaks lists into um, what I'm going to do on the days of the week and things that I need to look at and take care of um, in different aspects of my life so I'll put a little bit of a screenshot up for you but I found this really simple to use and really helpful which it doesn't mean that I'm investing lots of time in it but I get maximum um, effect out so just remember that when you're you're overwhelmed and maybe feeling how do I organize this downloading the latest or most more complicated to do programs and apps might not have helped you so I hope that's been helpful for you today. If you need to remember it in the most simplest way, just think goal, list and grid. If you apply this method across your workload where you feel overwhelmed and struggling to prioritise, I guarantee that you will come out of it feeling productive and being fruitful. If you've got any questions on this, comments or observations or need any help, and just put them in the comments below and I'll do my real best to, to get back to you. So there we have it. Um, please subscribe, share and like this video. Watch the next video in the series that's coming up which is all about um, how to use the grids method in more depth. So have a look at that video and in the meantime be fruitful and I'll see you in the next video.